What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the overhead. One of the easiest shots that we think we should be able to make over and over again because we've done all the work in the back of the court and then we find ourselves in this area right here for the put away. And for some reason, we keep seeming to drop the ball, either giving the ball back to our opponent or not making the shot in general. So I'm gonna go over a couple of key points that make people make big mistakes on a, what should otherwise be pretty routine shot. So let's get into today's video. And before we get started, guys, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. The channel is growing and we have projects scheduled as our channel gets bigger and bigger. Our next number is 15,000 and we're almost at 10,000. So let's keep that momentum going. So getting back to the overhead, the first thing I want you to do before we even get into how to actually hit an overhead is go to the baseline and warm up your serve. Obviously, don't do this if you're practicing before a match or something like that, but Go to the baseline and actually hit serves. The reason why I want you guys to work on your serve is remember, every person who's actively practicing should have three different serves. That would be the flat serve, the slice serve, and the kick serve. Do all of them because tennis is a reception sport. And when you're playing, the only shot that you don't have to actively receive is the serve. So toss the ball in a spot where you're most comfortable hitting your flat serves, slice serves, and kick serves. And remember that because when you're hitting those serves here, you're in control of what you're going to be doing in terms of how your contact is going to go through. I just had a flat serve and I just hit a kick serve. So when you go to the net and you have an overhead coming or you have a ball over your head, the first and most important mistake that people usually shoot themselves in the foot with is thinking that you can hit the same type of overhead on any ball. Most people go for flat overheads thinking that this is my opportunity to be aggressive. And it is if you can receive the ball in a proper position. But before you even talk about that, get the feeling of hitting over the top of the ball like a kick serve, hitting around the side like a slice serve, or hitting behind the ball like a flat serve. Once you've done that, then we flip it to this angle here. So I'm going to quickly breeze through the technical things because those are actually not the most important parts. When the ball comes to you as an overhead, the main things you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do is get into a continental grip or whatever the grip is that you use for your overheads. I recommend continental. At most, I would say turn into like an Eastern forehand but no more than that. Second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you get your body completely sideways for two reasons. One, that allows you to move effectively. People get themselves in trouble trying to move around like this because for one, it's tough to stop and then change direction. But two, it's tough to transfer power into the overhead. So as you set your racket and change your grip, tuck your foot back, kind of like a quarterback receiving a snap. You're going to be in this kind of position here and then get ready to release. Last thing, get your left arm up. Biggest mistake people make with the left arm is they'll kind of hold the racket and then open up at the last second. Your left arm, if you're right-handed, is your spacing mechanism. So make sure that you get that up and you can use that to space yourself from the ball. That is the main brunt of the technical stuff. Now, the reception piece is what's most important, so I'm gonna get into that now. So the same way you have a flat serve, a slice serve, and a kick serve, which mean different tosses for different contact points, you're gonna have that same concept when it comes to hitting your overheads. For example, if I get that ball above my head and in front of me like this, that would definitely be just the same as hitting a flat serve, where I can get that pop and I can get that extension out into the court with minimal difficulty. And like I was saying before, with rotation of the body, getting into a position like this and then catching it here allows you to transfer your body weight into the ball fairly easily with minimal difficulty in terms of positioning. Worst thing that happens is people think that they can hit a flat overhead and then they find themselves with a ball that's above them, still trying to be overly aggressive. Now, can you make it? Yes, but repeatable, no, difficult, yes. You can obviously find a way to manufacture it, but when you find yourself in those tough positions, what you're gonna do is actually switch to a different type of overhead. If I had a toss that I put behind my head like this, it'd be more like a kick serve. So hitting that top spin shot instead, I'm actually pushing up behind the ball rather than taking the ball behind me and trying to push it down into the court, which I can obviously do, is where you run into your problems. People will try to force the flat aggressive shot rather than just being smart and not trying to be overly aggressive. I'm gonna shift the angle behind to show you the difference between like a kick serve and flat serve versus a slice serve when it comes to overheads. 
So switching it to this angle here, if I was to be in a serving position like I keep using as a reference and I was to toss the ball in front of me, it would be my flat serve. If I was to toss the ball slightly off to my right side, it would be my slice serve. And then if I was to toss the ball off to my left side, most likely it would be a slight kick serve. When the ball comes at random positions, your job is going to be to understand your reception first rather than trying to force one of those that you prefer into a situation where it doesn't fit. Now, can you move to make it what you want? Obviously, and that should be the first thing you try to do. So for example, if you wanna hit a flat aggressive overhead, getting yourself into a position quickly where you can strike the ball above your head and in front of you is the goal. But when you can't do those things, the worst thing you can do is try to force an overhead that doesn't fit. So now I'm gonna have the ball machine actually moving the ball around and watch the way the ball changes depending on what it is. So this one here, let's see what it is. That would be flat directly above me. This one would be a slice overhead because it's off to my right. And that would be more of a kick because I'm bringing it from left to right. Flat. Give me a ball. I'm super ready for the next one. Kick. Flat. And that would be the main thing that people get themselves in trouble with is trying to hit the wrong shot. So if I go here and I try to slice it, can I do it? But it looks very difficult to pull off. Now, all it takes is one bad read of the ball to waste all the work that you've done in the back of the court. You've played return of serves, you've done all the scrambling around and you find yourself at the net in control. And then you have a ball that they throw over your head. And instead of taking a kick serve or taking a kick overhead where you spin it and play with a little more margin, you jump back and you try to force the flat one and you dump it in the net or you hit it long because you weren't reading the situation. It's a very undertaught part of hitting overheads where people get very into the technical part of hold it like this, turn your body, keep your arm up, reach up high. All that stuff is important, but the biggest thing where people fall on their face is reading what is available. Now, before we go and close the video out, what I will say is what I just did really close to the net gives you a lot of easy options because one step to the left or right, you can probably do what you want. When you're getting pushed backwards and you have to read your reception while moving really hard, that's where this can get kind of difficult. And that's where the real test on reading the ball comes in because everybody knows what shot you want to hit. You want to hit the flat ending of the point. But sometimes it's actually better to play a neutral overhead and get yourself closer to the net again, where you might just end up finishing with a volley. So we've all seen the scissor kick overheads and all that stuff. But the reason why people do that is because the ball's moving behind because the person doesn't want you to hit an overhead. And going back here and jumping up behind it, you can try to hit flat if you're catching the ball in front of you. But sometimes it might just be a case of spin the ball into an open part of the court and then get yourself back to the net to finish off the point. Most people do the opposite. They put themselves in the defensive position and then they try to hit the aggressive shot. And that's where the frustration comes in because you can make it sometimes and that tricks you into think you can make it, thinking you can make it all the time. So now I'll just do a couple demonstrations of moving backwards for that ball, but reading the different types of shots that are available and then we'll close it out. So for this last example, I'm gonna put myself up at the net because this would obviously be the goal. I don't want to hang out here and anticipate a good defensive lob. I always want to be closing in and looking for the best put away. But let's assume that I'm up in this position and the ball goes behind me. I would be somewhere around here and then the ball would be pushing me back into that area. So getting up, reach up, that one's flat. I'm at the net. Sometimes that might be all you have. Slice, get closer, flat. Looping in, kick, and that's really all it is. Your job is to just read what the ball's telling you to do rather than go and say what you want to do with the ball. But that's gonna wrap up today's video. Obviously, I didn't get too technical into how to hit the overheads. If you've practiced serving, you can do this without any deliberate overhead practice. If you know how to hit a flat serve, you know how to hit a flat overhead. If you know how to hit a kick or a slice, you know how to do it when you're moving around. That's why we started off with the serve, so that you could practice the reception points first, and then you use your feet to figure out what those spots are. 
as I said, worst thing you can do is try to force a shot into a situation where it doesn't fit. Be patient. It's okay to hit a neutral overhead. You don't have to finish the point just because it is an overhead. That's where a lot of people get themselves in trouble because they're stubborn and impatient. You're still in control of the point because of your court position. If you can hit the overhead to a good spot, you can probably close up and hit a volley if the ball happens to come back. But as I said, it's gonna wrap it up for today. If you know anybody who would benefit from this video, send it off to them. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.